Hey guys, I'm Aaron. I'm in my office again today. Just wanted to take a minute to talk to you guys about whether or not you should install a deep sump kit on your Porsche Boxster 986. If you guys have not seen this book, the 101 projects for your Porsche Boxster, I highly recommend it. I will put a link in the description of this video so you can go buy it. If you've been following my channel, you will know that I've been going through this book, making DIY videos out of the projects that are in it. And if you haven't been following, you should please subscribe and check out this playlist here on all of the projects that I've covered so far. So this one is project 12 in the book, and it says it takes about three hours, two wrenches worth of difficulty at $300 for the parts. I did some research to see if I wanted to do this for myself. So in today's video, I just wanna go over some of the pros and cons. First, I'm gonna start out discussing why people would wanna do this in the first place. This book does a good job explaining that the earlier Porsche 911s had what is called a dry sump oiling system. This pretty much means that there was a separate tank where it would take the oil from the bottom of the engine and put it in that tank. With this system, there was a lot of oil, about 12 quarts worth, that was available to be supplied to the engine at any time. Now our Porsche Boxsters have a wet sump system. That means that the oil is stored at the bottom of the sump underneath the engine. This kind of system does not hold as much oil and it is pumped directly back to the engine from this sump. So the difference comes in when you are taking high G corners. The oil from the sump can be shifted over to the side because of these high Gs and away from where the pump is trying to what they call scavenge the oil from. So this can lead to scavenging issues. Now I will point out that nobody even claims that just normal driving will cause any issues because of the sump that comes with your car. This mod is strictly for people that track your car. So if that's not you, I would not even consider this at all. So if you are tracking your car, is this really an issue? From what I can tell on the forums, a lot of people do not think that this is an issue in the first place. The people that do this are pretty much doing it just to be on the safe side. So whichever side of this debate you land on, I don't blame you. So really the only pro to this is the possible engine protection under high G turns. Now let's look at the cons. I don't feel like you're gonna hurt anything by installing this. You're just gonna be paying for the parts and the labor unless you do it yourself. So you just have to decide if it is worth that for the potential protection. If you do decide you wanna do it, I'm gonna give you a little overview of what you will be doing. So I chose not to do this mod, but I did have a leak in my sump pan earlier and I did a video on how to remove it, clean it out and reseal it. So that will be most of the work that you need to do for this. I'm gonna put a link up here to that video so you can see what that involves. In addition to what's in that video, there will just be a few more steps you'll have to take while you have the sump pan off. Now I should also mention that there are a couple of different kits from different manufacturers that try to accomplish this. I'll try to show you a couple of the different options. The book uses the Bray Cross one, and I'll show you a picture of that here. This is what comes in that kit. Essentially, it is just a few spacers and some longer bolts. This is what the bottom of your sump kit looks like. So you're gonna be taking this off. You're gonna take the plastic piece off and dremel these little windows out so that they are a little lower so that when you raise this thing up, it'll still allow the oil in. And this is the pieces that come with the kit that are essentially spacers to raise this up and lower this pan down. Now, some people have a problem with this kit because while it lowers the sump pan itself and allows you to put more oil in it, it doesn't adjust the pump that sticks down into the oil. So it is just as high as it was before. And I thought that's what all this book did until I looked more closely. And in one of the pictures they do mention, there's another piece from LN Engineering that they installed that actually lowers the pump. And that solves people's major problem with this kit. So in this picture, they are installing a pickup tube spacer for the pump here, you just remove this, essentially put another spacer in there and it will make the pump lower towards the oil. Now, several people on the forums that don't like the Bray Cross kit, they recommend a kit called X51. All right, let's take a look at the X51 pan. Now, I didn't take any of these pics. I can't take credit for it. This is on the Renlist forum. This shows you on the left the stock pan and baffle, and the one on the right is the X51. One of the ongoing debates seems to be whether or not the pan is the same as stock and if you can just buy the baffle by itself and replace it. But everything I've read so far, nobody can find just the baffle to purchase by itself, so they buy it as a kit. So let's take a more detailed look at the differences and why you might want to get this one. 
photo credits and explanation go to himself. The X51 has small upright gaskets noted in red that the stock one does not have. And here's the gasket on the other side. So when you put the pan on, these seal up with the engine block and prevent oil from flowing around the baffles. This image shows where you're effectively creating a little pocket of oil that remains close to the oil pickup since it will only go through the baffle openings. And here's a close-up from another angle showing that in the X51 pan, the baffles stay open so that oil from the returns can flow into the baffle interior. But lateral Gs causing backflow will slightly close them again, keeping oil inside the pocket. With all of these things combined, it seems like there is a larger quantity of oil at the pickup and that oil will stay near the oil pickup longer under cornering. So although a complete oil scavenge pump may be the best solution, the X51 pan looks to be much better than stock. I'll scrounge up some links to these kits and put them in the description below if you're interested in either of these options. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and there will be a lot more Boxster content coming, including these shirts. If you are interested in one and you work on your own Boxsters yourself, there will be a link to purchase these in the description. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.